Hi guys, welcome to another episode on fit technique. Today we're going to talk about the swivel technique. We're going to learn what exactly the swivel technique is and how to play it without hurting yourself. So first of all, what is the swivel technique? The swivel technique is an ankle motion uh, that takes advantage of the lateral motion of the foot. Compared to the heel up, uh, the swivel uh, allows us to play faster and with more power. This is because the heel up being a vertical motion has a limit of motion. The range of motion that we can use with the heel up is around, let's say, 30 degrees. Instead, the swivel, uh, since it's a lateral motion, has a little bit more space of motion. And so, let's say, um, takes um, around 45 degrees. So it has 15 degrees more of space compared to the heel up. Why is this so important? Time and space are connected. If, uh, for example, our the space, the maximum space that we can play at, it's, let's say, this space, so our foot moves of around this much to go up and down to, to play fast, and this is our 220 BPMs, we can't go like faster than this because we would need to um, decrease the space to increase the time so of course less space there is between the strokes less time there is so it's gonna be more strokes and so it's gonna be faster if this makes sense um, but if we're already at the minimum range that we can play to have a little bit of volume also for the triggers um, we can go over that. So if we add some space to the motion, then we can decrease the space, okay, and so we, go, we can go even faster. If we, we get to 220 BPMs with the heel up and this space, and the swivel allow us to add a little bit more space, then our 220 is going to have this space, and then we can go a little bit faster, and we can go to maybe 240 and have the same space that we the, the the heel up was giving us at 220 okay does that make sense so this is why the swivel allow us to to play faster and with more power because there's more range of motion on our foot laterally than vertically and so the more space we add the faster we can go okay so 220 if we add some space 240 if we add some space 260 and so on. So, how many times have we heard that the swivel technique hurts your knee? Or that the swivel technique it's a natural motion of the body, it's like something that comes naturally. So first of all, all the motions that we do are natural motions. And uh, unless your foot doesn't do like 360 degrees, well that's not natural, okay? But heel up, heel down, heel toe, they're all natural motions. Maybe people wanted to say that it's an instinctive motion, which it's the same for a leg motion or for other, every other motion that we, we do. And our job is to take advantage of these instinctive motions and educate them to become uh, controlled motions. So how do we learn to control this lateral motion and make it become from instinctive to controlled. First of all, we have to understand that this is an ankle motion. So we have to, as with all the other ankle motion technique, we have to isolate the ankle from the rest of the leg. Okay, so first of all, we have to make sure that our leg is not involved in the motion, and so we can start. Um, the first, very first step, it's going to be without pedals, without anything but our body. Okay, so we have to control our body first. We have to educate this motion from our body first. So, we make sure that the ankle is uh, isolated from the legs. So, we make sure that we can also hold our leg and make sure that the energy of the motions comes from the ankle okay and especially from the heel 
and this is different from the heel up which comes from the toes the motion comes from the toes here the motion com comes laterally from the heel you can think of the motion pushing inside or outside depending on how it's easier for you for me um, personally I think of pushing in and uh, then uh, the foot will start to swing so it'll auto automatically go a little bit out but we have, have to control that the motion it's gonna be as much inside as outside let's make sure that our motion doesn't go all the way in and then slightly out because then we will have a shuffle feel because the motion won't be regular so the pedal won't work in a regular with a regular motion this is the reason number one of why people hurt themselves um, playing the swivel technique it's because a lot of times they involve the leg on the motion and this creates a lot of rotation on the knee and in time all this motion and rotation will hurt yourself so instead if we isolate the leg the knee is not so involved there is a little bit of motion but it's not a motion that it's gonna hurt you because um, it's not a large uh, range of motion so um, the knee is actually barely involved it's more on your ankle so this is reason number one and it's the very first thing that we have to pay attention to let's do the same thing then with your our left foot so let's make sure let's hold our leg in order to block the, the block it and make sure that we're just um, doing the motion with our foot and our ankle after we did this let's make sure that we don't push on the floor that we don't press on the floor okay and here the balance uh, has a big role so let's make sure we keep the balance in the correct position and we just have to deal with the weight of our leg so if I had a tennis ball under my foot I wouldn't squash it while I, I, would, I was doing this exercise okay it's just literally my foot it's laid just literally laid on the floor there's no pressing at all why is it dangerous to press the pedal on the floor um, or the foot on the floor if we press we give a lot of pressure to the knee of course and even if it's a little bit involved it's still pressing down and having a rotation going so that creates a lot of pressure to the knees and it's dangerous this also happens with many other techniques though um, not only um, with the swivel this can happen with the heel toe for double strokes and many other techniques but um, since the swivel it's a little bit harder to coordinate and to get it down and learn it um, this caused more problems than other techniques uh, so far so uh, let's make sure we don't press on the floor and then we will see on the pedals why this uh, benefits also the playing in the power of um, the swivel okay so once we've learned how to control our body and we can do the motion without the pedals let's go on the pedals okay we can develop this technique on practice pads on or on bass drums um, it doesn't really matter at this point of the the practice session so the first thing to do uh, when we're on the pedals is to get used to deal with the force of the spring so to get used to it slowly we can start doing a leg motion or a slow motion anyway which is not the correct way of doing it of course as we know but it's a way for us to start um, dealing with the feel of the spring tension so we can start slowly and increase the speed to a point where we will start shifting to an ankle motion so this will take some time to get it done because especially when you get to the point where you have to shift from the leg motion to the ankle um, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty difficult if you're no, not used to it um, 
but as I said again, this the first slow part uh, allows us to um, get used to the motion, and then once we get to that speed, um, we will just have to try to control the ankle motion. Let's remember that the goal here is always to have the beater as close to the shoe as possible, rather than pressing down. So this is the first way to uh, learn how to deal with the spring. So from slow with the not correct motion, um, but just to, to practice it, to a little bit faster sh shifting from leg motion control to ankle motion control only. If this is too hard uh, to, to understand and get it done, there's another way for starting this motion, which is always not the correct way to do it, but again, this is just going to be a sh for a short time for you to practice and to coordinate the motion and deal with the spring tension, which is going to put a little bit of pressure on the pedal in order to have the beater attached to the surface that we're playing on. And from there, let's start swinging with the mission of still having the beater coming as back as possible, so as close to the shoe as possible. So we will start from this position and then slowly get rid of the pressure and of the weight that we were putting on the pedal. But don't get used to playing this way because this will hurt. Um, so let's make sure that you don't then apply this technique pressing down or involving the leg. Okay, so this is just a way to practice it and to get used to the motion. I keep repeating this because it's very important for you to understand. Another good exercise that um, will help us to develop the swivel motion is to play one bar of heel up and one bar of swivel technique at, at the same speed, uh, switching from one technique to another uh, so that we still we will keep the same feeling but we will control the pedal motion with the two different techniques. So like this, for example. But to make sure that we're doing the right thing, we will add a third phase, which will be playing the swivel technique without the spring of the pedal. So, let's get rid of the spring of the pedal, and uh, let's try to do the same exercise of switching from uh, heel up to swivel technique, playing one bar uh, each technique, and let's see what happens. So playing without the spring will force us not to press with the, our f leg or weight on the uh, pedal because if we do so, we will choke the riva. So we will we'll make sure that um, this is not happening and this is a very um, useful way to, um, let's say, um, have make sure that we're doing the correct motion, the correct things for this technique. And of course we will have to pay attention to our leg motion, if we are uh, using our leg or not. But to avoid this, we can also grab our leg and force it to stay firm. So we can hold it in this way and... And so in this way we're going to make sure that we're not pressing on the pedal and we're not involving the leg and the motion. So guys, these are the steps for you to work on the swivel technique, to understand what it is, why it uh, benefits um, speed and power, and how to do it without hurting yourself. So enjoy your practice, and I'll see you next week with another lesson.